Okay, <clears throat> welcome to the first session of the last day of the VB 2015 conference and thank you for showing up uh, despite being a bit early. It's uh, one of probably most difficult uh, time to speak at this conference. So, uh, but I'm sure you won't regret it because we have two really interesting presentations in the first session. So we have Martin from IBM Trust here first to tell us about uh, how he found bots using some uh, kind of memory uh, technique. Martin. Hi, uh, good morning. Uh, my name is Martin Korman. I work at uh, IBM Trustir, the malware researcher. Uh, today we'll present volatility bot. Uh, this is a tool I have developed myself, leveraging the volatility framework. Uh, I believe in sharing information and tools between researchers. When I write a new tool or script, I like sharing it for the benefit of other researchers. Uh, as part of the work as malware researcher, there are a lot of repetitive tasks, like finding the malicious code from memory, dumping it, fixing, fixing its header, trying to identify the malware, and only then really getting to analyze the malware sample. Uh, this project is meant to ease the process and make it as automated as possible. As I said before, the project leverages a volatility framework in order to do its code extraction. Uh, for people who don't know volatility framework, it's an open source framework for memory analysis and forensics. Before I start explaining about uh, the functionality of volatility bot, I would like to speak a bit about uh, where code can reside in memory. Uh, analyzing malware can be pretty much like playing hide and seek. The malicious code has a lot of places to hide. New processes can be created as the part of the malware de deployment process. Uh, for example, uh, AdroP, like in this screenshot. Uh, Self-modifying code uh, is stored encrypted in disk in order to avoid static analysis. But uh, in order for uh, the code to execute, it must be exposed to memory at some time, at least a part of the code. Uh, malware sometimes will uh, inject its code to different processes in order to make them do malicious actions on its behalf. Uh, for example, to communicate uh, via Explorer X to infilt exfiltrate data or uh, use any other legitimate process. Uh, process soloing is used by malware to make it a uh, process look legitimate. A uh, malicious process starts a new instance of a legitimate process, for example, uh, Internet Explorer, in a suspended mode. Uh, before before uh, resuming the, process, the executable, uh, the sections are freed and relocated with a uh, malicious code. Uh, kernel modules, uh, usually they serve to hide the malware evidence, make the malware uh, harder to remove, for, and to remove or obstruct the research process. Uh, according to Rootkit and Bootkit, which uh, I recommend the book, uh, advanced control and data flow hijacking techniques that leverage the lower layers of the OS architecture. And the API hooks. Uh, by hijack hijacking the flow of the Windows API call, the malware can grab your post request or your banking website, for example. Uh, you can see here we have a call to internet close handle. If we disassemble uh, at that point, we see there is a jump. If we go to the jump, it links to the malicious code itself. Having so many different methods to hide a malicious code requires many guessing and manual work. Did it load the kernel driver? To which processes it injected code? At which addresses? Any new processes have been created? Has the malware hooked any interesting functions? This new automation tool for researchers cut most of the guesswork and manual extraction out of the malicious code extraction phase. The system has a locally managed queue which processes the samples in the order they were submitted. This, uh, this system is very modular and writing new plugins is pretty straightforward. The next slides, I will go over the components of the system. The manager is the core of volatility bot. Uh, the manager executes the automatic extraction as well as the post-processing modules. Uh, this module also controls the associated machine's activity to streamline the workflow. Uh, the machines are an abstract design of a research machine. It contains uh, these five functions, and uh, currently VMware and VirtualBox are supported. 
machine are grouped in machine resource pools. Uh, depending on the uh, configuration, each sample can be submitted to multiple pools. As you will see in the demo, I have Windows XP and Windows 7 64-bit pools. Code extractors are uh, modules that are executed in order to extract the different malicious code components from memory. Uh, there are separate modules for code injectors, uh, code injection, new processes, uh, hooks, etc. All the techniques I showed before. Uh, researchers can write new modules that uh, access memory and extract various information and artifacts. Each code extractor module may call zero or more post-processing modules. These are tasks with automated actions like fixing the p-header, performing static analysis, uh, do a Yara scan, uh, extract strings, uh, etc. Uh, I want to explain a bit about uh, the last post-processing module uh, that was listed there. Uh, because it, uh, I think it's pretty special. Uh, YSA generates uh, dynamic error rules generated per P file per execution. Uh, the offset, there are offset placed instead of the string and API tokens you can see here. Uh, this feature allows you to write uh, Yara signatures and be, uh, like behavioral uh, Yara signatures. You can see, for example, here I have here the API open process token and the string as a debug privilege. This signature signs the uh, process uh, privilege escalation. After execution, those, uh, those tokens will be replaced with the actual offset from the file calculated with the image base and all. Uh, hundreds of samples were tested in volatility bot. Uh, I have used the research environment comprised of uh, five uh, Windows XP machines, and the, each sample was executed one minute. Uh, one important thing before I show you the result of the tests, uh, success is defined by uh, the ability to extract injected code, uh, a kernel module, or a dumping, dump of a process. Uh, I took a subset from the latest virus share archive, containing a total of uh, around 5,000 samples, and submitted them to volatility bot. I have noticed the high success rate in general for all the samples in the subset of 88%. Uh, notice that not all of the samples that the statistics above refer to inject code or load the kernel driver. Some of them are just installers of uh, potentially unwanted uh, programs, and some of them might be corrupted executables because of the size of the subset. Uh, in this case, uh, instead of going on quantity, I picked the malware samples one by one, choosing all the common malware families. A total of 68 samples were tested, and the uh, tested samples were malware from all different categories. Categories. Uh, in this subset, we see an even higher success rate of uh, 92%. And uh, the analysis output, output provided indicators, such as uh, strings, Sierra signatures, which uh, focus the in-depth analysis on the relevant and significant parts of the malware. OK, demo time. OK. This is the login page for the web interface. Um, researchers that don't want, don't want to install their own instance of a volatility bot uh, can try this service. Keep in mind that the, the quota is limited and all submissions are public. OK, this is the, the main view. You can see all the recent submissions. Uh, let's upload the sample. Okay, it's, it's submitting. Let's take, uh, let's look at another sample for now until it uh, f finishes. Okay, uh, here you can see uh, this sample is uh, Sality. You can see that it extracted the injected code as well as the kernel driver that the Sality loads. Uh, we can see, the, of course, we can download, download the loaded kernel driver. And we can see various, uh, all, each tab is the uh, output of a different post-processing uh, module. We can see the static analysis, we can see strings, uh, various uh, vendors are uh, here. 
יארה סיגנצ'ר סטריגר, IDC and these ones are not uh, relevant for the kernel drivers, I'll show them at another uh, sample. Another sample I wanted to show is this one. Okay. Uh, this is a uh, dial. You can see, for example, it extracted uh, the injected code uh, as well. It injects to the browser and the twist VC host. Uh, like I showed before, we have here the strings, uh, Yara. Uh, here we have the IDC, which uh, um, its imports found uh, during execution are, uh, can be added to uh, IDA. And we have here the YSA, which you can see here. We it found uh, the process privilege escalation behavior with all the flow, uh, some code injection pattern, a generic process iterator with a, a tool snapshot, process first, process next, and a creation of a TCP socket. Okay, let's see. Let's see our submission, how it's progressing. It's still executing. Okay, let's go back to that sample then. Uh, we have here also uh, the code hooks. We can see or il here all the uh, hooks there as placed. Uh, for example, you have hooks on uh, PR read, PR close, PR write functions in Firefox. It's uh, really useful to see them uh, like this. Oh. I see there are some results for our submission. Let's see what you have here. We have SVC host injection in Windows XP. Ah, it hasn't finished yet. Okay, now we have results. You can see here all the output, the strings, Yara signatures, IDC, and of course, download the sample. Second. Okay. Uh, as I say, already said before, uh, writing new plugins is uh, pretty straightforward. Uh, I expect you to contribute to it uh, new plugins and uh, new plugin ideas. Uh, volatility bot is uh, still work in progress, and uh, there are some caveats I've uh, found during my research. Uh, false positives can be caused uh, because legit Windows kernel drivers uh, might be loaded during uh, malware execution, and they might, might be dumped as well. Uh, additionally, any new processes started uh, after the malware was executed will be dumped too. Uh, in order to avoid uh, all this, it can be useful to cancel all uh, automatic updates, uh, Windows update, uh, Google Chrome updates, etc. Uh, the malware might detect the research environment, no matter how much effort we put in uh, hiding it. Uh, malware might have uh, long sleep timers uh, in order to avoid research and prevent us from get getting the complete malicious code. Uh, in addition, as part of the design of volatility bot, I have chosen to the, the minimalistic agent inside the machine will not uh, intervene with the malware behavior. But uh, because of the modularity, we can, uh, we can write a machine module with a physical machine. I was thinking about it, and uh, it's possible. It's possible to do. Okay. Uh, the source code uh, is available to anyone who is interested. Uh, the URL shown here in Bitbucket. Uh, there is a complete docu documentation there as well. Uh, you can always contact me with uh, questions. Um, I prefer if you contact me by Twitter, I can miss the mails easily. Uh, if you don't want to deploy a complete volatility environment, you can uh, use the web service I've showed before. Uh, in order to register to the web service, send me a mail, and I will create an account for you. Uh, again, keep in mind that the, the quota is limited and all submissions are public. Anyone can see and download uh, everything you have uh, uploaded. 
questions. Thank you, Martin. Um, do we have any questions from the audience? Yarmo here. Thank you. You mentioned about load internal drivers. Uh, do you have a whitelist or any other kind of mechanism to separate between typical clean behavior within, within VM and then things done by malware? Uh, I have tested uh, around 5,000 samples and uh, it helped me create uh, some kind of whitelist. Uh, again, uh, maybe it loads a TCP filter, legitimate uh, TCP filter driver. Yeah. The malware might load it, uh, as we saw in Celity. Uh, it actually was not a, a kernel driver from Celity, so, so some kind of false positive, because uh, that kernel driver loaded uh, as part of the execution process, but it not, does not belong to Celity. So uh, I have a small whitelist, yeah. Yeah, you might want to try fuzzy hashing, uh, fuzzy hash algorithms, for example, SSD for SD hash uh, for whitelisting memory regions. Yeah, thank you. Any more questions? We have, I think, plenty of time. Okay, so I'll ask one question as well. So, kind of, in my opinion, this is like really great work and. Did you ever think of actually integrating with some other automated anal 